Welcome to season 12 of the Parenting Aces podcast, a proud member of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and this week we are revisiting Sense Arena, the virtual reality software and a uh, you know, adjunct hardware for players to train tennis without actually having to be on a court with a coach. I'm super excited to have Yannick Yoshizawa and, oh God, totally blanked. Welcome to season 12 of the Parenting Aces podcast, a proud member of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and this week we are revisiting Sense Arena, the virtual reality software and hardware to help players train off the court to get ready for competition on the court. We have with us Yannick Yoshizawa and Matt Simons, who are both involved with Sense Arena in different areas. But the exciting news for them is that Sense Arena just announced a partnership with the ATP Tour. And so they are going to be able to bring in much, much, much more data to help not only professional players, but also juniors, rec players, adult players, college players improve both on and off the court and on both the physical and mental aspects of their game. I'm super, super excited about what's coming from Sense Arena, what they've already got available, and I hope you will all be sure to check out the show notes on ParentingAces.com for some details that you won't want to miss. So without further ado, Matt Simons and Yannick Yoshizawa of Sense Arena. Yannick and Matt, welcome to the podcast. It's great to see you both. Um, Matt and I got to meet in person not too long ago. Yannick, you and I still haven't met in person, but uh, here we are on Zoom again. And I I'm so excited about this new alliance or partnership between Sense Arena and the ATP Tour. And we're going to jump into that and its implications for junior tennis and college tennis. But before we get into all of that, uh, Coach Matt Simons, I want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to the Parenting Aces audience and tell us a little bit about your tennis journey. Yeah, so um, I'm currently the B2B manager uh, for Sense Arena. And what that means is I work with um, the clubs, academies and universities uh, around the world, helping them implement um, the system, you know, best use and um, just helping them just overall um, uh, figure out best uh, kind of standard operating procedure with the system. And so with that, I, I kind of have a, a unique background um, in sales, um, obviously a strong, strong sales background, but more importantly, with with the tennis side, um, I'm actually still currently a division three head coach for a men's and women's um, university outside of Seattle at the University of Puget Sound. And so that's pretty unique because that really allows me the opportunity to not just speak on this as, you know, someone who's selling and promoting the product, but actually someone that's using it um, with my team, using it daily. So it's um, able to provide me kind of a different uh, perspective um, that I think is pretty valuable when I'm uh, meeting with potential um, potential users and potential teams and academies, because uh, there's a diverse um, there's a diverse use um, with the system. And so. Um, kind of understanding what everybody kind of goes through. Um, clubs are going to have different challenges than maybe an academy, than maybe a university, than maybe a high school team. And so, um, and I've really touched all those. I, I, I was a high school coach um, briefly um, for for um, boys tennis and also uh, girls varsity basketball. So I've kind of touched both uh, both uh, things there. Um, but also, yeah, I've been a head coach for five uh, five plus years now. Um, and then a former head pro um, in a, in a um, tennis club setting as well, and uh, still compete in the 45s. Um, played my college tennis in the same conference that I uh, that I currently uh, coach in, so know that conference very well. It shifted. Uh, when I played back in the day, uh, it was NAIA, so I experienced, I was able to experience nationals and experience uh, what, that, uh, what that experience is like, and the whole, my whole school, um, uh, the whole conference switched to Division Three, so I've I've kind of uh, been able to um, after I left, um, it switched to Division Three. So I've been able to kind of understand both both sides of that and experience that. So, yeah. So bring and then also wrote a more of a mental performance type book. Um, and so uh, being able to kind of connect the mental side with this, uh, it's it's a powerful tool. And so um, able to kind of touch on all those different topics with coaches. And so that's that's uh, has been helpful. 
Yeah, love that. Yannick, our audience is familiar with you. I, hopefully they watched or listened to our last podcast earlier this year on Sense Arena when it first came out. But why don't you just give us a little brief reminder of who you are and your life in tennis and your connection to Sense Arena? Yeah, no. Uh, first of all, thank you for having us again, Lisa. It's a uh an honor to be part of this and um, with your audience as parents it's an extremely important audience for our product as well um just a quick brief um i my you know uh title it's the vice president of sensor Arena for tennis and my life in tennis started since a young age as a junior player myself went on to uh come to the united states as i'm originally from brazil to play college tennis played the very first level of the pros of the future events um, and then went on actually to work for the Women's Tennis Association, the WTA, for nine years of my life uh, and then transitioning into St. Serena, which has been a completely fascinating process uh, since we started last year. Uh, so we're getting close to our one year anniversary um, since we launched the product uh, in November 1st. So very excited, um, as you mentioned, that, you know, we now get to do it as a rebranded name called ATP Tour Sense Arena. So happy to be here on the show again uh, and now sharing with uh, Coach Simons and with you any information that we can hopefully help the community, uh, which uh, you do a very good job of. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so I ATP Tour Sense Arena, does that mean Sense Arena is focusing its efforts solely on men's tennis or is it still going to be applicable across the board? Yannick, you want to take that? Oh, I think Yannick froze. Matt, are, are, are you here? Can you take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, are you back, Anna? Sorry, guys. Yes. No worries. Did you hear my question? No, I did not. Sorry. Okay. So I said, um, you guys have rebranded as ATP Tour. Does that mean that Sense Arena is only focused on men's tennis now, or are you still working across the board? No, definitely not. And great question. And a, a, a very good to clarify from the beginning. Definitely not only for men or boys, but, you know, we work across all genders and ages and levels. Um, of course, you know, our partnership with ATP Tour, uh, it brings our access to the pro levels, but also, you know, just a big exposure. Uh, we have had conversations with the WTA and we continue to develop that relationship with. Um, we work very closely also with a lot of uh, WTA players, uh, as you, uh, some of you may have seen it, may have uh, seen our website or heard, you know, with Jennifer Brady, Luis Stefani, and uh, many others who actually did quite well at the U.S. Open. So we were very happy to see the results. So uh, again, we work across all genders, levels, um, and ages. So definitely not uh, one uh, shoe fits all. So, Coach Matt, when you are pitching Sense Arena to an academy that has a strong junior tennis program, what is your elevator pitch to them? Uh, why should a tennis academy that works with ju junior players want to bring Sense Arena into its offerings? That's a good question. And my elevator pitch, um, I go to a really long skyscraper. So my elevator pitch takes a little longer. So, <laughs> so we got to um, go all the way up to not, the 50th floor, not just the third floor. Uh, no, but in, uh, in all honesty, um, the quickest way to sum it up would, is I really view it as a mental performance tool. So that's the quick two second pitch. From there, I believe it really kind of spins off into a couple different points. So depending on who the, the audience is going to be, it's going to be like, for me, really, I see a mental activation tool being um, a big thing. And what that means is it's like essentially resetting the mind, resetting the mindset. Um, so especially as, you know, as a college coach, you'll see players that are fried from, from, from class, fried from school all day. You just kind of see that glazed deer in a headlights look, or let's say you're traveling, um, 
And this is where it applies to, you know, traveling families, going to sectionals, going to tournaments, going to things like that is just traveling is exhausting. Getting out of a car after really more than two, three hours, you start to get kind of fried and worn out. And then what you see typically on that, let's say the first matches are on a Friday at, at, a, at a weekend tournament for ITAs. In, in our, in our, for me, how I look at it is the ITAs is our, it's one of our college tournaments. And, and, and with that, um, some of the worst tennis can be played, even with a physical warm up, getting that get, getting that time mentally, you're still kind of fried. Their eyes are kind of darting all over the court. And so the mental activation side is huge. Being put going into the headset, um, going through some drills. So when we're talking 10 minutes, 10, 11 drills, going through a training plan, um, just resetting the mind. So cognitively and mentally, you're sharp. Your senses are sharp there. And then you can get the body warmed up. But a lot of times these tournaments, you get a five minute warm up. Um, and that's not enough to to quite honestly get the, the the mind warmed up. And then by the time you're down a set, you're already spinning and kind of going down to a negative place. And so to already feel sharp, I think, is just that little tiny advantage can make if that can make a difference of a couple points in a match, you've already you've already made a difference right there. So in my mind, that's I, I that's that's a standalone. I, I, I would get that as just a standalone for just that. Um, but then that's not even getting into the data analysis, the performance metrics you know, where we're able to kind of uncover the performance insights of reaction time. Um, you know, as a coach, I can really, I can honestly track reaction time besides just eyeballing and guessing um, or investing large amounts of money in some sort of um, data analysis. I'm able to get that feedback and then also see that on like a weekly basis, being able to assign different drills and being able to see, is this going up and down? And in my mind, I believe those results are you, you, you're treating that like you're tracking that like a high performance stat and no different than perhaps heart rate in the morning or different things seeing why is there an ebb and flow flow and that creates a talk an opportunity to talk an opportunity to maybe understand or reflect on oh yeah something else is going on and then being able to connect the dots that those other things are actually impacting me on the tennis court so so those those are kind of the main big points that I really um that I like to highlight and from there um, like I said I could go another couple uh, another hundred floors so <laughs> Yannick, when a player is traveling with Sense Arena, um, what equipment do they need and how are they going to use Sense Arena on the road? It's very different from being in your living room with your big screen TV, I assume. Um, and you're muted. Oh, yep. You just unmuted. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think, you know, a couple of things to clarify here from an equipment perspective. Yeah, actually, it's very small. Um, so you actually travel uh, just uh, if it's in a backpack or is smaller than a backpack. So which actually is just the headset in itself, uh, which Matt is showing there, uh, a part with two controllers. And uh, as an addition, what we created is the actual racket uh, that you can bend. So you see it there. It's really you know, under two pounds that you can put in a backpack or your, you know, racket bag or just, you know, anything that you're traveling with. So, you know, there's not only the convenience part of it, uh, but also just the use cases as well. As Matt was saying, of course, you know, that there is the mental activation and whatnot. But one thing that I wanted to uh, also highlight that we just released with the ATP Tour, uh, it's called Match Visualization. Uh, tool that we have created, uh, you know, and I'm sure you, Lisa, um, as coach, as a player, um, have, you know, heard of people to visualize, right? And then I think a lot of the pro players talk about, like, closing their eyes, envisioning that perfect point, that best shot. Um, but for a lot of people, uh, it's very hard for you to do that, right? To go through that perfect shot, perfect moment, and we've created now an ability for you to easily create a pattern of success and actually that transfers into the headset and then you can see that point over and over again on how you can best um, hit that shot. So if you know if it's serving out wide and hitting a forehand uh, inside out, so you can see that over and over again. And all you need is truly just putting that in your head, you know, and seeing those shots over and over again. So you know, I think the travel part. Uh, also has made it a little bit more efficient and productive uh, when you can do that on the road. Does it need to be connected to a laptop or a phone or anything, or you can just use the pieces of equipment that Matt showed us? 
Correct. So you don't have to be connected to a TV or, you know, a laptop or anything. Of course, if you want someone else to see what you see, then you can do that. But that's really just an add on. Uh, what you do need is just a Wi-Fi to connect, to enter into the application. But once you're inside the application, you don't need uh, the Wi-Fi anymore. So everything you need is inside the goggles themselves. Correct. Yes. Super cool. Super cool. Um, so when uh, players are using Sense Arena to prepare for competition, and then we're going to back into the training side of things, but I really want to talk about using it in a tournament setting or getting ready to compete. What are some of the advantages that Sense Arena has over just getting on a court with a bucket of balls and you know, going through your regular pre-match routine? Yeah, maybe uh, I'll start and I'll let Matt uh, talk about his team and, and everything else. But I think, you know, from an overall perspective, and as mentioned, there's different use cases. And I think the first one, I would say it's what Coach Matt said about the mental activation, right? So you can always do your physical warm up, but not a lot of times you're mentally warmed. So just getting in there, doing for five, 10 minutes to get your brain focus on a specific task, which is nothing more than is when you actually go into a match. It's that ability for you to focus on the right times and right moments, right? So that allows Sensorina, that's what it helps. Um, that's number one. I would say number two, it's just the visualization aspect of it. So just not actually seeing that pattern that we talked about, but also just going through certain drills, so, you know, you have the ability to see it and track on your performance. And I think two things, right? Like, and I think we even talked about this last post podcast that we were in. We're not here to replace by any means on-court warm-up or on-court training. Uh, but guess what? There's a lot of times that there are no courts for you to warm up. You either, you know, your match might be at 12 o'clock and all courts are filled out now with matches because you know you have to have it for all the amount of people so you either come at 7 a.m and warm up which i think you should still do it but how can you actually have that feeling that you have been on courts right before your match so i think there's also that aspect of which it comes back to that mental activation and visualization that you can create without having that court with you. And then if you do have it, you can still add on that type of warm up, which is great. Matt, what are you seeing in the college arena where you're using Sense Arena to get ready for an actual dual match or a tournament match? Yeah, and again, and also echoing what, what Yannick said as well. I mean, uh, the court space, the court availability, that's a big issue with a lot of these larger tournaments. And, and maybe some of these larger tournaments, it might be tough to even find a corner space to even to even use this as a warm up tool. So that's why you can even use it before when you're at your hotel room, you know, an hour or two before your match. It's still an effective tool, even an hour or two before. So I just wanted to make sure that's um, that's good because I know some of these tournaments can get kind of chaotic and um, and not all clubs hosting those can be conducive to, for, you know, a 10 by 12 or, you know, to or for a 12 by 12 area or 15, 15 by 15. And so being able to um, have that that time option, um, extended kind of time is extended release, if you will, um, you know, is good, but it really is the tip of the iceberg. You know, um, it's like when we see the iceberg, we don't really see all the other stuff below when the pros warm up, we just see the last finishing touches on the, on the courts, but it's, it's the things that go on behind the scenes and they have big solid plans that go into place. It can be hours of warm up ahead of time. And if you're able to get those things, that that's wonderful. Um, but not everybody has those luxuries of being able to do that. Most of the time we're racing in from work or from school or from some other event and our brain is scattered and we just don't have that luxury. Um, and that's really where I find this to be the most important. And, and there's, there's also lots of, we have some doubles drills in there of like when to poach, when to pass. And so if you are playing in especially a doubles match, I think that can just kind of help it just helps kind of sharpen, you know, sharpen the pencil when you're trying to, because everything is about focus and concentration on the court. And if you, and how else do you warm those up and how else do you warm up the mental side? We all talk about it being 70, 80, 90% mental. 
but we don't know how to do those things. And typically it might take, and a lot of times just having time is fine, but without that time, that's where I think the 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 the, the more advantages that really start popping in for um for Sense Arena. But that's really the biggest thing that I see is is it's really going to be the the mental engagement. Um, if there's just that that deer in the headlights, that that glossed, that glazed over look, that's absolutely my my cue for when Sense Arena needs to um be used. And even for me personally, I've done this where I've been working events that Sense Arena was a sponsorship and I was sponsoring and I personally played in the tournament. And after demoing all day, I've personally gotten to the system before playing my match. And it, it makes a significant difference. And it's you just don't know the difference unless you try it before and after, you know, because you really yeah. there is nothing quite honestly to compare it to. So and and let's be real. Um, when we're talking about preteens, teens, even college players, um, they're not always so great about doing the mental warm-up that they need to do, right? It's not sexy, it's not fun. But having a VR piece of equipment is all of a sudden makes this very attractive and something that players want to use and want to engage with in order to do the prep work necessary to perform at their best once they are on the match court. And I think this is one of the big differentiators for you guys is it's not just something they're listening to. It's not just something they're reading or, you know, um, trying to remember or even sitting still and breathing and, you know, saying a mantra over and over. This is actual activity that's happening. They've got a piece of equipment that they're utilizing. And so the, the level of engagement potentially is much deeper with Sense Arena in order to help them get prepped for maximum performance during competition. And, and this to me is, is what sets y'all apart from the other things that are out there right now, especially on the mental side. We haven't even talked about, you know, the, the perks of using Sense Arena to prepare physically for a match yet. And we're going to jump into that in a minute. Um, do y'all agree with what I'm saying? I mean, is, is this something that you're seeing with the players and, and hearing from coaches? Matt, yeah, you want to? 100%. Oh, yeah, you wanna, go ahead. Um, a hundred percent, you know, and we actually work very closely with some academies, uh, as well with juniors, especially, you know, from the age of 11 to 15, 16. Um, and you see in one is exactly what you said, right? Like it makes it engaging, you know, we even use the word fun, right? Like, because you learn when you are having fun much easier than when you're not because your brain is shut down. So there is that aspect of these kids, they come in and you see how engaged they are and how competitive they are. So that brings also the competitiveness out of them. And then the other part, which is has been extremely fascinating to learn, it's that as they're doing the drills, there you start seeing it and the coaches are starting to see the same patterns that they have it on court, you know? So the frustration that comes out or the reset button on how, okay, they missed a couple ones in VR and how quickly they shift back their focus to continue to get the best score or like you completely shut down after you're making some mistakes, right? So the good thing is also you can, from an engagement perspective, their habits starts to pass it on into this, which then in a way you can use as a supplemental tool to you know make those habits better to correct certain things which then it translates back into the court as well matt do you have anything to add to that yeah just a small part would be as um is with that with the younger players is that it's also a safe place to make mistakes so um a lot of i love that wait, wait 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 let's say that again because this is this is an important thing that's often missing with players, right, is yep. feeling like they can mess up and their world's not going to shatter apart. Yep. So I think that's huge. I think a lot of personality types that choose tennis, um, you know, good isn't good enough, perfect isn't perfect enough. And tennis players tend to be very, very hard on themselves and extremely critical. Um, and tennis craves a great opportunity. Even if you win, you can be losing 40 plus percent of the points. And so it, it mentally, it can be tough. But I, one thing I do see is that it's a safe place to make mistakes. And so 
uh, we don't grow unless we get uncomfortable. And so without pushing and making and, and making people uncomfortable and getting to that limit, you really don't see growth. So I like it that it is a place to to be able to do that. And and like Yannick said, coaches then are able to see their patterns start playing through in, in the VR headset. So then, you know, then perhaps that can be a time of, okay, when you're seeing this, when you start to react this way, then let's try to mentally reset and use that as a, in my mind, it's like, this is a focused time in the headset so let's have focused targets and priorities. So we're targeted and focused on the mental reset. So when we're doing it there, if we're really focusing it on there, the idea is it will hopefully translate more on the court as well. So that's that's those are some of the other reasons I think it's huge. But yeah, being really being able to be able to make mistakes is huge because people just kids just don't want to, they're not comfortable making mistakes, especially around other people. And so this is, I think, huge in that respect. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, let's be clear, we're not talking about spending hours and hours on virtual reality. We're we're talking about 10, 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes max that you're using the equipment to turn on the, the connections that need to be turned on in order to have effective practices, in order to perform at your best in a match. So this isn't a replacement for on-court time with a coach. And, and I, I say this a lot. I, I don't want the coaches watching and listening to this to feel like we're trying to replace them. No, we're trying to, not we, y'all are trying to give them another tool to help them do their job more effectively and to maximize the amount of face time that they have with their players um, and then send the player home with homework, if you will, to then reinforce the lessons that happened on the court. Correct? Yannick, you want to jump oh, in on this? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, you, you're, yeah, correct. You know, I think that that's the point of it. It's not, as we said, you know, we're not here to replace on court and, you know, not the coaching itself. It's a supplemental tool which actually enhances and makes it more effective the job of a coach. You know, everyone does some type of mental training, which a lot of times it's not logistically possible, you know, talking about the lights that you have it that you touch it, or you know, that being the visualization aspect, because you know, you cannot be on court and be asking a kid to do that, knowing uh, exactly the words that you said it's not engaging enough. Therefore, what St. Serena can do is actually help the coach, you know, train their players in a much more engaging and effective way because of the stuff that we're bringing on. You know, as, as Matt said, you know, it's it comes to reality because once you understand and once you actually have your players tried or, you know, your kids or the players themselves, then you start understanding, okay, I can do this instead of this, and it's actually more impactful and actually will allow me to have more time to do other things uh, and whatnot. So yeah, totally agree. Matt, are you finding that coaches are using Sense Arena as a way to help players warm up before drills or private lessons. So for example, having uh, the headsets on site at the academy or at the club or at the park so that when the player is doing their physical warm up before they start drills or lessons, they're also using Sense Arena to do the visualizations and get their brain ready to accept the information that the coach is going to be teaching them during that time together. Yeah. Uh, and so I think there, there's a couple things. And so um, I, I think with, uh, um, because I, I, I wanna, wanted to go back to one thing. It's like, we talk about, uh, let's look at like, for example, the example of stretching and warming up. Does, does that take away from time on the court? Well, yeah, it takes away from time hitting, but yet we, we all understand the value of, of what happens if we don't stretch, of what happens if we don't warm up. Um, and yet that, that isn't necessarily has been applied to, to the mental and cognitive side. And so when you apply that same logic to, of course, like, is it technically taking away from court time? Sure. Five or 10 minutes, but the, the amount of time that you spend per week stretching and warming up on the court 
that's less time that you would spend overall doing a, a few different training plans and going through sense arena. So in my mind, we're not even touching that side. We're already acknowledging the importance of the physical warm up, And so this is just getting the mental side to catch up with something that we're already acknowledging um, the, the importance of um, on that side. And with the coaching, um, you know, you know, we're, we're creatures of habit. And so the biggest thing is that um, as this product gets accepted, it's going to be how it's then implemented in the programming and coaching. So it's more of as you start seeing the benefits, the coaches that see the benefits with their players. Like for me, there's no going backwards anymore. Like I, I can't unring that bell and not use these benefits. And so until you really see firsthand those benefits in your player's eyes or truly seeing the benefit in a close tight match on a Friday night, you know, sectionals or a Friday night level three or four or something. Um, when you truly see the difference in that, um, in that really challenging tough time, that's when people are going to see that it, it, it just becomes a natural part of their um, part of their thing. It's no different than when graphite rackets or big technology leaps came into tennis People, you know, were, well, you know, the wood racket worked fine. That was, that only worked for another year or two until everybody had shifted to graphite and, um, and was able to um, take advantage of the new technologies. So that's kind of. Hey, I it. still have my Chrissy Everett autograph. So <laughs> 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 um, one of the things that, that just keeps popping into my head as I'm listening to y'all talk about this is, you know, there's. There are oftentimes, especially at large facilities where they have a bunch of kids on court with one or two coaches, where the kids have downtime, you know, they're, they're waiting their turn to hit balls or waiting their turn to perform the drill. I mean, since arena could be right there for them to pop on really quickly, keep their body warm, keep their brain warm, keep them engaged in what's happening on the court while waiting their turn to hit actual balls with the coach. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's two parts to this and I want to make sure that I know we're transparent enough because so the, where the technology is now, and I think one for people to understand, and we've talked about last time, the headset in itself, the virtual reality headset, it, we don't manufacture. We use the MetaQuest 2 as a compatible compatible hardware for our application software to run in. So just to want to clarify that. Um, and then right now, all of the VR headsets, MetaQuest 2 and others, they cannot be used outside. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to clarify that because of the direct sunlight and oh. how it impacts the sensors. Um, so you know, VR has to be used indoors or at some place that has no direct sunlight. So if they are doing those things indoors, great, completely agree with you. Or if you have a rotation, and you know, I think that's something that you we also have seen it. It's actually you have, you know, as a lot of coach, when you have a lot of players that you can actually quote unquote, and we say we add a court. Right. So you can actually have, let's say you have 16 kids and you only have three courts. You can have four kids on each court and then one station that it's in somewhere on the shade with four kids uh, doing sense arena. Right. And then you rotate just so they keep active and you don't have as many kids on the court at the same time. So it becomes more productive and they're still training uh, a certain part. And also just to go back to it which is actually some one of the academies mentioned to us is that how they use it is when the players, they feel that a player is not engaged on the court, that they're doing drills, they actually send them to Sense Arena to reshift their mindset, get activated again, and they come back to it. And they see a difference on that concentration aspect, which is what um, Matt was talking about. I love that. I, that's great. And I'm glad you clarified about it not being able to be used outside. I did not know that about VR. Um, obviously, my experience is very limited <laughs> with virtual reality. I think I shared last time, the only time I've ever done it was um, playing a game and I ended up thwacking my dog with <laughs> with the piece of equipment that I was using. So Your actual uh, dog or your VR dog? Oh, no, my actual dog. Dog. <laughs> Yeah, we're not too good, not too good. Um, so I want to go back to the ATP partnership and what this means for the 
diversity of information and opponents and type of shots and all of these things that are going to be available to users of Sense Arena to be able to access. And Yannick, I, I would love for you to talk a little bit about, I know last time we talked about, you know, Jen Brady and Jack Sock, but now you, you guys have a much wider swath of players to draw from. And, and that means a much wider swath of types of serves and types of shots and, and all of that. Um, so how does Sense Arena bring all that in for, let's say, a junior player across the country to be able to access? Yeah, no, definitely. And thanks for bringing that up, Lisa. Um, this new feature, it's actually called Master Your Return. And I think to take a step back when we were developing um, the new software to come out with the launch of the ATP, we started thinking, uh, what are one of the most undertrained shots in tennis? Uh, and I think a lot of people know that, or you know, we'll get to know that it's the return of serve, right? Even though half of the time you're either serving or returning and you do practice, I believe most of the players practice serves every time that they get into a training session, but I'm not sure if everyone trains returns uh, because, you know, there's a lot of uh, difficulties uh, to that. And of course, if it's your coach, your coach might not have the shoulder that can serve for eight straight hours to a bunch of different players, but also just the impact of, you know, return. It's not about just hitting the return but it takes a lot more than that. It's about reading the server. It's about anticipating. It's about reacting and being able that you're focused on the right time. And what we believe with Sense Arena now is that, you know, we talked about having Jennifer Brady and Jack Sod in the beginning, but now we're actually bringing it to the next level where we're working with a data, data analytical company called Golden Set Analytics and getting real data from them to be implemented into animated players inside of Sense Arena. So you can pick and choose from different levels uh, of players, all the way, you know, from beginner all the way to the pros. Uh, you can choose, you know, the, if it's a righty, a lefty, you can see the height of the player. Um, so it not only becomes a way for you to train, you know, and to get as close as you can for a certain player that you have difficulties uh, training your return to, but also, you know, that visualization aspect of the day before a match, you're playing against a player, you know, A, B, and C with certain traits, you can now try to get that. Or after a match, you know, how many times we've seen a coach say, hey, you did a very poor job on your returns, go there and let's practice returns, but it's not the same if I'm going to go and serve to my player and actually have that player that it was very similar to the player that you just played and see what are the gaps that you're having. So that's definitely one that we're definitely continuing to evolve. So we have 16 uh, different players uh, from all different levels, uh, as I said, to beginner, to juniors, to recreational, to pros. Um, and then we continue to expand that as well in the near future. We hear a lot of commentators during professional events and and mainly, you know, the the big four events um talk about, you know, oh, the player should take a step to their left or they should step into the court more on the return if they were going to cut off this serve or that serve. And now since arena can help you figure that out before you actually go on the court to play the match, right? You can try out different return positions. You can try out, um, you know, whether, you know, just hitting a flat forehand return is more effective or, or coming under the ball is more effective or, you know, hitting a lob is more effective, for example. And I think that's super cool um, because we are starting to, pick up on the terminology used when these matches are being uh, televised and, and there's commentators there. Now players can actually practice those things on their own. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, and again, it's, it's not, it's about doing those little adjustments, right? Like taking a step to the left or going forward, or going backwards, you know, understanding the, body position, the arm position of the player before it serves, 
even before it gets to the time of hitting the ball. So all those little things, it makes, you know, a huge difference as a returner, uh, which again, we always say that, uh, you know, it's one of the most undertrained uh, parts of tennis, um, but it's a very hard way to train. So therefore I think sensory can definitely help on the, on that gap. Yeah. Matt, are you using Sense Arena to train that aspect of the game with your college teams? And if so, how's that working? Yeah. So as we just, um, our fall season just started um, last week. And so my main focus is with, uh, with the drills um, this fall is going to be um, the reaction time uh, on volleys. So we're working on, on that data and then also uh, the return of serve. So the master you return. So in my mind, it's, it's uh, your read and reaction time is, is the most critical thing out there. So if we can improve that just a little bit, if you can pick up on things just a little bit, uh, just a little bit quicker. Um, so for me, those are the two most important um, aspects for me to use. So the hundred percent that that's um, that's the one too for me. And and so as you're using it with your teams, Matt, um, what are you seeing so far? I mean, how much time does a player need to spend working on this on Sense Arena for it to actually translate into an on court difference? Yeah. So. Um, so the one thing is I've, I, I've wanted to, um, I didn't do a big training with them. I wanted to see how intuitive, how they could kind of go through some things on their own. And um, I found that to be, um, it's pretty quick and easy for, for college players. They've been able to just kind of uh, log in pretty, pretty, pretty intuitively on their own, go through some different things, and then they kind of get a feel for what's in there. And so, I mean, we're really talking, you know, for some of the training plans, we're 10, 11 drills, we're talking, you know, 10 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. 10, 11, 12 minutes, you're in the headset, like, I mean, most people are getting to practice 20 plus minutes early anyway. And so that time gives, um, you know, um, gives you more than enough time. And and, and quite honestly, I, I really look at technology as like, you know, you have a third of the people who are the early adopters. You got a third of the people who are going to copy those. And you have a third of the people who are never going to do it regardless, you know, and they're still playing with the wood racket. And um, and so and that's that's OK. And so I, I, I see a similar thing, you know, um, you know, there's uh, the people that when they see the when they see it themselves, it becomes, you know, the, the benefit becomes um, you don't need even the coach doesn't even need to, to push, you know, to push anything. Um, but for me, especially the one thing I did want to actually highlight is that um, I, I actually have a player uh, with a broken arm this this fall. And so um, in their non-dominant arm and they that was something that um, they are they're not able to they're not cleared for on court hitting. They're not they're not cleared for even um ball machine hitting. They're not they're, they they're not cleared for contact hitting <clears throat> for contact. And so, but what uh his doctor did clear him for uh was VR training. And so to be able to, and so what I have seen, whether um, and again at division three, I've 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 had players in the past that have been multi-sport athletes. So perhaps they've missed a couple of weeks of 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 training and season in the in the winter. Uh, while they were finishing their winter sport. And there can be sometimes a transition depending on the sport, depending on the things and just getting the rhythm and timing going. And in tennis, you know, it's rhythm and timing. You're like, why was I playing great when I was relaxed? And then when I was tight, everything was off. It's your rhythm and timing. And so with injuries, just being off the court, um, that I've, I've, I've seen that as a coach is the biggest thing is, is that kind of hangover until they get caught up. And so that's the that's the thing I'm most excited to see is that um, there are they are able to go on this every day. So they're able to continue working on that rhythm and timing. And so I'm hoping when they're back on the court that it's an immediate quick transition. So I'm going to have real world examples of actually like of, of, of during going through an injury recovery um, with that. And already in just a short time, I, I, I quite honestly, this is only a week plus into this. So I don't want to come at you with, you know, we've improved at 300 percent and now you know, we went, you know, we're going to be the number one seed in conference, but, um, but one, you do see an engagement. You do see the players that are excited to be using something that they know is a high performance tool. They've seen the pros, you know, they see the ATP Alliance, they see the pros, they see the WTA players, they see the college, the other high level college players um, using it. So, um, so they are seeing that benefit and quite honestly, that gets not a lot, not everybody, but it gets a big percentage excited to actually use um, use the the technology and with other universities that I'm working with um, it's it's kind of very similar you're seeing maybe a third of the team that's very engaged and with that and when, when when they are even more engaged that's when the coaches are like okay I'm going to assign more drills to them I'm going to really push them and 
and then and then those players, you know, um, are going to be the ones driving the use because you can't do these things and not have a benefit. You you can't do you know, even working out more and not, not see a benefit. You can't hit more serves and not see a benefit. All of these things will provide a benefit. Um, it's just a matter of getting, getting enough, um, you know, reps in there for, um, for everybody to see. Perfect. Perfect. Yannick, um, as we wrap this up, I wanted to just make sure that we share with the audience how they get Sense Arena, what the price point is, and any other particulars in, in terms of actually purchasing and using the equipment. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, so, well, I think that the easiest way is for everyone to go and take a look at our website, uh, and it's called tennis.sensearena.com. Um, as we have talked a little bit of before, you do need that MetaQuest 2 um, hardware, which you can also buy as a bundle in our uh, website, or you can also just buy it in Amazon Best Buy um, if you prefer to have those reward points. Uh, and really, uh, from our part, you know, we are a subscription, so we can continue to develop our software. So, you know, even from the last that we spoke, Lisa, to today, uh, just the little things that we talked about, it has improved tremendously. And then again, we want to make sure that we are able to provide that service to our customers because, you know, it's a subscription fee. So, you know, it starts really as low as uh, $39 a month if you're paying as an annual, uh, but also we have a, a monthly option uh, that it's going to $59 starting tomorrow. Uh, with the, all the upgrades and so on. So, and then of course, as I mentioned, we have the, what we call the summer bundle, uh, which is basically the one that it comes with the headset in itself, uh, which then, you know, you save about 200 bucks by buying uh, through our platform as well. So, so we have all the, the bundle, different options. Sorry, the bundle, you get the headset, the racket and the subscription. Correct. Okay, just to be clear. Okay, and all of that, um, we will have the links on the show notes on parentingaces.com. So uh, for those of you looking to get more information or to actually purchase Sense Arena, uh, you'll be able to do that through the links in the show notes. So we're, we're hoping to make that <laughs> easy for you guys. Um, if people have questions about this or want more information, what's the best way for them to reach out to you guys? Oh, I think there are a couple of things and uh, Lisa, maybe hopefully you can also share those emails over that. If it is a um, coach from an academy, university, uh, please reach out directly to Matt as uh, you just heard from him. He's the expert and can definitely help the best way to help your athletes. Uh, you know, if you are having um, just questions overall, you can always just contact support at sensearena.com uh, and then of course if you want to uh, email me uh, it's just my first and last name at sensearena.com which you feel free to share as well with that um, so yeah any question that you may be you know having you know we do have parents uh, reaching out a lot of times to understand the best case scenario for their juniors and whatnot uh, and then of course so once you get it as well you have complete support from our side um, so therefore, you know, even after you buy it, uh, you can always reach out to us to, you know, chat either with us or with one of our advisors uh, to definitely get the best out of the product. Love it. Matt, any last words before we wind this down? No, we covered uh, all the main uh, the main features I like. So I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for doing the podcast. Um, I look forward to the next wave of improvements and add-ons that are coming with Sense Arena. I know you're only going to continue to grow and, and improve and, and add more features. So it's super exciting to kind of follow your journey. And um, to my listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to check out Sense Arena. Links on the website at ParentingAces.com. And we will catch you next time on Parenting Aces.